Well, I'd say that's about shot. Good morning, and welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead. This is Matthew. We got a nice light rain coming down this morning, and it's going to help out those veggies that we got into the raised beds late yesterday evening. I'll take you around here shortly and show you some of those. We're going to get started this morning with feeding the animals. Rosie's down here enjoying this light rain and the cool temps that we have today. The chickens are in their brooder. We're going to get those out here in a couple more days, but they're going to have to stay in because of the rain. We like to put them out on dry grass to start with if we can. I'll take you around and show you some of the veggies we got planted yesterday evening before it got dark on us. And I'm also going to show you today how to make a pig water taking a plastic barrel and some hog nipples and bulkheads and making that happen. We've got to get a new one made to go down here in the Farrowin area for Rosie's new litter when they come. One that they can drink out of that's a little bit low and one that's a little bit higher that Rosie can drink out of. And yes, we've got the five gallon one inside the Farrowin barn, but we that's temporary. We want a nice large one for that. So stick around, we'll show you how to get a few things done on a rainy day. So guys, I told you I'd show you what we did with those jalapenos after we got them out of the raised bed the other day. We turned them into pickled jalapenos. And we've got several jars of these. We'll take them and use them on salads, use them on pizza, use them on spaghetti, use them straight out of the jar sometimes. But uh, if you can figure out what my favorite pickle is, or favorite pickle company is, leave it in the comment below. Maybe you can figure it out. Good morning, babies. Y'all ready to eat? I'd say you're ready to eat. You ate all this last night. Which one of y'all pooped in the water last night? All right, some clean water down here on this end. Try not to poop in it. Okay, so these little meat birds are taken care of. The plan is to put them out on grass tomorrow, and if we're able to do that, we'll bring you along for that. They love when they first experience grass. Now we're going to get on to checking on our breeding group, get them fed and watered if they need it, check on the pullets, and go feed Rosie. Good morning, rooster. I hear you over there trying to crow. Y'all got plenty of feed and water. You go check on your little buddies across the way over here and see how they're doing. And I know, you don't like this coop, but don't worry. You ain't got but about a week or so and you'll be in a new one. Good morning, little fellas. Or ladies, and a couple of fellas. Y'all got plenty of feed and plenty of water. It's nice and dry in here, too. Keep on the scratching, keep on the scratching. So here's your look at some kohlrabi. Lisa got these started a couple of weeks ago, several weeks ago. We actually started them when we should have based on history of the weather, but man, it just stayed hotter a lot longer. So the plants really struggled, but these kohlrabi are looking pretty good. Got cabbage in this bed. I had to ask Lisa what it was because I couldn't remember. They're enjoying this light rain this morning. Hopefully we can keep them living. In this bed are Brussels sprouts. Hopefully they'll come on and do good. It takes a long time to get these to maturity. Over here you can see the carrot seed that I planted is coming on up. Just took the tarp off yesterday after seven days. It's coming up. I'm glad I planted it thick because it looks like I got a few bare spots, but I believe they'll come on up. And in this bed we have broccoli. And we're hoping it's going to do pretty good if we can just keep the bugs off of it. Get you a good look at everything from back here. Got field peas that are ready to pick in one bed. The other bed we planted about a week or two later. But what we're going to do is we're going to do one picking on those field peas. We'll pull up the plants and pick them off because we want to go right back behind them with some other fall vegetables. Rosie girl, Rosie girl.
So we got out here last night and we were working with Rosie because it's been about three or four days since we took down her old fence. As you can see now, she's not scared at all. She'll come on out here. We had to feed her treats of some discount bread from the discount bread store. And now she's coming on out here and getting to her water and eating food. Now we'll be able to work on getting her up to her farrowing area. But she's doing really good. She's a beautiful pig. I try not to get in her way because I don't want to get ran over, but it ain't going to be long, y'all. Today's September the 2nd or the 1st. Today's the 1st. I'm a day ahead. She's due on September the 17th. So our plan is not to stress her too much, get her up to the Fairwind barn so she'll deliver on time and everybody be nice and healthy. So, guys, I'm going to do my best to show you how I take a plastic barrel a bulkhead and a standard hog nipple to make an inexpensive water for your pigs. Now we know that Rosie drinks at 23 inches. That's where her nipple is currently set at. And we've got an 8 inch cinder block that's going to be our base. So we're going to need to come up 15 inches on this barrel to get us to that 23. So measure up 15 inches and make you a mark with a sharpie that's going to tell you where you need to drill your first pilot hole at. Now this bulkhead is an inch and a half in diameter so we're going to need to drill a hole that's an inch and a half but you may not have an inch and a half bit for your drill so if you don't you're going to need to drill the smallest hole that you that you have to and take a saw of some kind I'm going to use a, a small jigsaw and finish cutting this hole out and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Now I'm taking a one inch drill bit because that's the largest bit that I have and I'm going to go ahead and run a hole straight through this barrel. Alright, so there's a one inch hole but we got to make it bigger. Now so that you don't make that hole too big Take you a sharpie and go around the base of this bulkhead where the threads are. And this will give you a, an idea as to where you want that hole to be when you get done. And careful with these sharpie fumes. They stink to high heavens, man. Now we're going to take this jigsaw and see if we can't carefully get that hole the size we want. this again. Alright, before we go any further, we got a hole out. Let's see if that's going to fit this bulkhead. Alright, let's see if she'll fit. 
perfect just a little bit of wiggle room but that's okay because this thing's got a nice fat washer it's going to seal off anything now go around where you drilled that hole out and get those little burrs off you may have to take your pocket knife or something like that you don't want anything that's going to uh, kind of mess up your seal so this barrel i want to design it so that not only can rosie drink out of it but so can these piglets when they start being weaned from mama now they'll have access to that little five gallon bucket once rosie's out of the farrowing barn she'll be drinking out of this one but we want to be able to have that other one down low so they'll get used to a pig nipple down there as well as off of sucking off mama's teats but we want to make it not as high as the one for Rosie. We need it a little bit lower. So we've got an eight inch block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about five inches. And that five inches should be sufficient. So as these pigs start growing, you want them to reach up for the water. You don't want their head down trying to suck the water. You want it up. That's just a natural flow for these animals. So come up about five inches. about six inches offset from the other one you just did and make you a mark that's going to be where we put the hole for the other nipple drinker hole number two fire in the hole all right now we'll get that one opened up and cleaned out a little more. Same process as the other, make you align with the bulkhead and the sharpie and get it cut out. Now to install these bulkheads, you want to take the backside nut off of this bulkhead. Notice you got a silicone ring right here, a gasket. That's going to go on the outside of the barrel. That's how I do it anyways. Make sure it's nice and clean. Nothing's going to prevent that decent seal from taking place because you don't want this thing leaking. That defeats the purpose. Now you have to reach in from the inside of the barrel. Line it up. If I can get it lined up. And I will tell you, on these bulkheads, it's not righty-tighty like you normally would do. It's lefty-tighty. So that's a little bit of a workout for your brain. Now once you get it in there, you're going to take you a set of channel locks and get it all good and snug. What I like to do is hold it with the channel locks, get it as snug as I can get it from that nut on the inside. and then tighten it from the outside. It's not going to take a ton of force. That should be enough to hold that water. And once you get water in it, you may have to tighten it some more, you'll see. Now on this pig nipple, what I like to do is take a little Teflon tape and put a little bit on there because it gives you that little extra barrier to prevent anything from leaking. And it don't take a whole lot of it. You just want to make sure you keep it off of the end. That's where it, there's a spring set in there. That's what triggers the water to flow whenever the pig starts drinking. And you can adjust that on the back to tighten up that spring or loosen up that spring. And then just take it and twist it in until it's snug. But you do want it. We'll probably have to get the channel locks and tighten it one more turn. You want this thing you want this nipple facing up the open part of the drinker. And the reason for that is because you want the top of that mouse snout to mash down on that and when they suck the water comes out make sure that it's positioned in this fashion right here's your close-up shot of this assembly you got your bulkhead running through washer on the outside 
Teflon tape around the nipple drinker. Nipple drinker facing up and tightened in. These pigs are not going to yank this thing out of this barrel. Um, sometimes you'll see people just drill a hole, heat it with a torch, and run this nipple in. That ain't going to work. These hogs are strong. You need a decent bulkhead running through this tank in order to make this thing work. All right, now that I've showed you one, I'll get the other one installed, and I'll show you the final product here in a few minutes. And we'll go down and we'll set it up where it's going to be at. All right, guys, so here's your look at the finished product. Got a nipple drinker near the bottom. Still plenty of room for sediment to settle. Not going to affect the nipple. The baby piglets, when they start getting up in a little size, will be able to reach up, get them some water out of this one. Miss Rosie will be able to get into this one and drink all the water she wants out there. So this should work pretty good. Now we're going to go down here and I'll set it up for you and you'll see where it'll be at. Alright guys, now we'll get this water towed off of here and get it set up. So now we got it put on its base. Now all we'll have to do is come back with a couple of T-posts on each side and a ratchet strap. We'll secure it down so the hogs can't jerk it off of here. But this ought to work out pretty good. So guys, thanks for spending just a little bit of time with us today on the Piney Woods Homestead. Hope you enjoyed walking around with us, seeing the gardens, the raised bed gardens, seeing the chickens, and seeing us build this little inexpensive hog water. If you're curious, the whole thing cost me about 30 or 40 bucks for the time I bought the barrel, the bulkheads, and the nipple drinkers. And they work really good. I've never had one to tear up. And that's been two years running now with some full-size hogs. So they work good. If that's something that you want to do, by all means do it. And you can even paint the outside of that barrel with some black paint to keep algae down. But what we have found is we like to clean them out. So about every couple of weeks, We'll empty the water out, give them a good cleaning, and put fresh water back in. I just think it works out really good that way. Now i got to go up to the house and get these jalapenos that we picked the other day processed. I may bring you along and show you a couple of clips of that somewhere here in the video. But guys, thanks for spending time with us. If you're subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. Share our channel with your friends. We'd love to have you back. We love living this way, and we hope that we can help you live this way too if you want to do it. You can do it. You just got to get out there and do it. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.